The Zionists took our religion and they're using it as a tool to occupy, to intimidate, to silence other people because if you speak up against them, you call down anti-Semitic. So we, 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 the religious communities, uh, stand in opposition. A couple of years ago, the Pope went to visit Netanyahu, and, and Netanyahu's bragging to the Pope, this is where Jesus lived in this land, and he spoke Hebrew here. So the Pope corrected him. The Pope said, no, Aramaic. And he, he Pope was right. Netanyahu, was so, Netanyahu says, yeah, yeah, but he understood Hebrew. Well, you know, maybe he did, but, but Hebrew was, was never the national language of the Jewish people. It was a holy language, just like... Uh, the land of Israel was a holy land. Oh, by the way, if, if you see the clip and you don't know which of the two people talking is Netanyahu and which is the Pope, the Pope's the one wearing the yarmulke. Even if we were to pretend that the Jewish people have a capital, that would have nothing to do with whether Jerusalem should be the capital of Israel, because Israel's not the Jewish people. Israel has nothing to do with the old Jewish commonwealth. It's a country that was created in 1948, when you hear the Israelis or the Zionists talk about how uh, Jerusalem has a connection with the Jewish people for 2,000 years, 3,000 years, 4,000 years, it's all true, but that doesn't translate to, well, therefore, Jerusalem has to be part of Israel. People think that Israel is some kind of continuation of uh, Jewish uh, governments, and, but it's not. It, it's a completely different form of government, completely different values, completely different ideology, and completely different people. These are not religious Jews that are running the country. These are atheists. And yet, the Israeli Prime Ministers from Ben-Gurion all the way up to Netanyahu use the Bible as an excuse for ownership of the land. Ben-Gurion, he says, the mandate is not our Bible, but the Bible is our mandate. This is a man that didn't believe the Bible was given by God. He didn't believe God ever spoke to prophets. He didn't believe it at all. Neither does Benjamin Netanyahu. It says in the Bible, watch the Sabbath to keep it holy. Netanyahu doesn't refrain from work on the Sabbath. It says not to eat non-kosher food in the Bible. Does Netanyahu do that? No. There is nothing holy in the Bible that Netanyahu cares about. The only thing he cares about is his land. Restorationist uh, Protestants, we call them evangelical Christians today, they existed hundreds of years before any Jewish Zionist was ever born. And because the evangelicals, the Restorationists, had great influence in Britain, and Britain had the mandate. The Zionists very, very much adopted the Christian evangelical interpretation of the Bible, and that's what they use today. You'll find that Benjamin Netanyahu sometimes even espouses Christian evangelical interpretations of the Bible over the Jewish ones. A number of years ago, Netanyahu spoke in the Society of the Auschwitz concentration camp, and he mentioned a prophecy in the book of Yechezkel about how the prophets saw dried bones rising from the ground and growing flesh and becoming live again. And Netanyahu said that that prophecy is fulfilled with the state of Israel because the Jews were dried bones and now they grew flesh and they're, they're real people again. This interpretation is not found anywhere in any Jewish source because in Judaism, this is impossible. But for over a century, this has been a Christian evangelical interpretation. The Zionists, when they talk about the Bible, they're not talking about the Judaic version of Judaism and Jewishness. They're talking really about the Christian evangelical version. Netanyahu has no right to claim that his state is mine. I was born in America. My father was born in Poland. My mother's family is from England. We have nothing to do with Israel. We're Jews. We're observant Jews, we're religious Jews.